Before we get into the second law of thermodynamics and what it states, let's recall the first law of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is essentially a statement about the conservation of energy. It states that in any closed system in which energy is allowed to flow in or out of the system, the change in internal energy of our closed system is equal to the Q plus the W, where Q is the energy transferred as a result of heat that is transferred into our system, and the W is the work that is done on on our system by the surroundings. So the first law of thermodynamics is a very useful law because it helps us describe the way that certain processes take place in nature. However, it doesn't actually describe the entire picture. And that's because there are many processes in nature that readily obey the first law of thermodynamics yet do not actually take place. So let's look at two different examples. The first example is as follows. Energy spontaneously flows from a hotter object to a cooler object and never spontaneously in reverse. So spontaneously we simply mean without the input of outside work. So we're never going to see energy spontaneously flow from a cold object to a hotter object. Now let's consider a second example. Let's suppose we take an object and we raise the object a certain distance, let's say from my hand, and we let go. The object's gravitational potential energy will be transformed into kinetic energy. And when the object hits the ground, all that kinetic energy will be transformed into thermal energy of the hand and the marker. So the temperature of the hand and the marker will increase slightly. So we see that this process takes place spontaneously without the input of any outside work. Now, what about the reverse process? Does this process ever take place? Let's imagine that thermal energy in the hand and the marker is transformed into kinetic energy and the object spontaneously begins to move upward to some height. So why doesn't thermal energy become kinetic energy and then gravitational potential energy. So this process will never take place spontaneously in reverse. However, if I apply an outside work, for example, I take my hand and raise the marker, this process will take place, but it doesn't take place spontaneously because we have to input outside work. So even though these two processes as described would not violate the first law of thermodynamics, for some reason they do not actually take place. And to explain this lack of reversibility of certain processes in nature, scientists formulated the second law of thermodynamics and it states the following. Energy can flow spontaneously without the input of outside work from a system at a higher temperature to a system at a lower temperature. Energy does not flow spontaneously from a lower temperature to a higher temperature. Now note that this is not a generalized version of the statement. In the next several lectures, we're going to formulate a generalized statement of the second law of thermodynamics using something known as a heat engine. A heat engine is essentially an instrument or a device that transforms thermal energy into mechanical energy. So in the next several lectures we're going to study what the heat engine is and we're going to use the heat engine to formulate a generalized version of the second law of thermodynamics so that it applies to all different types of processes.